Hey everyone, welcome back to the third video in the Arduino series. In this video, we're going to be adding in a servo with our Arduino Uno. So to get started, head over to tinkercad.com circuits and go ahead and begin a new circuit. The first thing we're going to need is an Arduino Uno Rev3. So grab one of those from your components as well as a servo. and a breadboard. So have all three of these components in place. Now the servo is a special kind of motor, let's say, that has the ability of rotating, but only between zero and 180 degrees. So it can go in both directions, uh, back and forth, but it can't spin in a full 360. If you hover over each of these leads, you'll notice you have a signal lead, a power lead, and a ground lead. So simply connecting these to the Arduino would be fine, but since I want to give you all more experience with the breadboard, we're going to be using the breadboard and then connecting them to the servo itself. So starting with the ground, I'm going to take that and plug that into the negative port here. So all this is now considered ground. I'm going to take the ground and plug it into the ground on the Arduino. As for the power, that needs to go into a 5 volt source. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it into the 5 volt, but I'm going to plug it in like the following way. Since we don't need the 5 volt anywhere here, I'm going to click once, click again. And I'm just kind of clicking to create those arcs there to create some nice connection there. So that's gonna be the five volt. And because that is providing the power, I'm gonna change that to red. Whereas since these are the ground wires, it's just usually good practice to keep them black. And then lastly, we have a signal wire. So we're gonna connect this into port nine. And there's a specific reason for port nine, which I'm gonna get to in a second. Let me kind of navigate myself around there into the signal wire and because it's a signal wire you are free to choose the color you want to okay so to get started about why I plugged it into nine and none of these other ports over here the servo runs in a very specific and special way these are all digital ports over here so everything really between 0 and 13 are considered digital digital ports now we will stay away from 0 and 1 for specific reasons which I'll get into later but all of these are digital which means digital ports can have either a zero or a one signal okay that means you'll either it'll either send a zero or a one or it will receive a zero or a one so you either have everything happening or you have nothing happening so what that means is you either have your light on which would be like a one or you have your light off which would be a zero Another way to consider this is we could also call it low and high. When you have your signal as high, it means it's on. When you have your signal as low, it's off. But these are the number equivalents. Now, I said the servo can move anywhere between 1 and 180 degrees. And if it did move between 1 and 180 degrees, there's no way we can receive a number within this range if all we can receive back from a digital port is zero or one. However, there are special ports, special digital ports, the ones with these little tilde signs over them, so 9, 10, 11, 3, 5, and 6, that have those little tilde signs that are special digital ports that contain something known as pulse width modulation. This essentially then turns your digital port into an analog port because it's varying the time of the on signal and the off signal to create a value. And then you can use that value to control things. So we can create the value of 0 to 180, even though in reality this can only go from 0 to 1 based on how, how often we turn on and off the signal. And because Arduinos and computers can do this you know, thousands of times per second, uh, if not faster, then you, you won't even notice. 
that it that it's doing this. Okay, so we've plugged it into nine. We got everything else plugged in. I think it's ready to code. So let's go ahead and head over to our code. And this is like a new interface for me. It's usually down here, but I'll work with it. And I'm going to go ahead, take the code that's in it right now and toss into it. And for this, we're going to also need to create a variable. So start by heading over to variables and we're going to create a variable and I'm going to call it position. So type that in, press OK. And now we have a position variable that's going to allow us to you know, move or adjust the position of this servo. Now, what this program is going to do is it's going to allow us to turn this 180 degrees back and forth. And we're just going to have it on a time loop so we can just simply see what the servo can do. To do that, we're going to have to first count up and then we're going to have to count down. Go to control, look for the count function. I'm going to take one of those, drop it in there and then head over to the output. And because we're going to be adjusting the servo, you want to select the one that's discussing the servo. And this one over here is the one we're looking for. Rotate servo to a pin. And I'm going to grab a second one of these for later because we're going to need one for our countdown function. OK, so let me try to adjust this a little so you can see it better kind of limited based on how this is set up but I guess I'll just roll with it for now so what do we have we have count up we're gonna start at 1 and we're gonna move from 1 to 179 even though this can pro probably go to 180 I'm a little concerned that that 180 value might reset it and cause it to spin so I'm gonna have a count up from 1 for for position so position right now doesn't have a value. We can set it to zero if we'd like. We're going to have this count up by one for position from one to 179. So let's set our position value before any of this even begins. I'm going to go ahead and grab this here, drop that in, and I'm going to say set position to zero. Okay, so position, the word position has the value zero in it. Just like in math, you can say x is equal to zero. We're just saying position is equal to zero. And then we're going to count up by one. So th the first time this runs, it's going to be position is equal to one. And then we're going to rotate the servo pin. And we plugged it into digital port nine. I'm going to adjust this then to nine. And we're going to make it move position degrees. Because we just said we changed, we counted up one for position. So position is at one the first time this runs, and then we're going to wait 20 milliseconds. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to type in 20. I'm going to adjust that to milliseconds. Okay, now the cool thing about this count up loop is that it's going to keep counting up. So it starts at one and it moves this one degree, then goes to two, moves that to two degrees, so on and so forth. Once position is equal to 179 and it runs that, then it's going to break out of this loop and it's going to go to whatever is underneath it. So at the end of it, it's going to be equal to 179. So over here, I'm going to go over to... Actually, we don't need to set it because it's already at 179. I'm going to grab another count loop. And this time, I'm going to count down. Okay. I'm going to count down by one for position from, and if we're at 179 right now, I'm going to say 179 to zero or to one if you'd like. Okay, because they won't really matter because we're setting it up here anyway. Okay, so count down and then we're going to rotate servo pin that's currently placed in nine to position degrees. Okay, so we're starting at 179, it will be at 179, and then it'll go down to 178 every time it runs this loop. And it'll continue to do that until it hits 1, and then after that it goes back to the start of the program and positions back to 0 again. And then it continues on and on. So it goes back and forth. Let's go ahead and just start the simulation so you can kind of see what's happening here. 
So it's rotating from 0 to 180, and then it goes back. Okay? And you can definitely see there's kind of a kickback almost. But it's rotating and then moving back. Okay. So that's pretty much what this program does. If you set this circuit up in real life and you want to get the code, remember you are able to extract the code out. You just need to go over to where it says blocks and switch it to text. And then I guess it's saying, are you sure you want to close the block editor? Any blocks you have will be lost. That's fine. Press OK. And this here is the code that you'll want to copy and paste into your Arduino program. So copy, paste it, uh, and if you are having issues downloading it, check back to the second video because I talk about it in the end about how to import it correctly. Okay, and you can always switch back to blocks if you'd like, unless it deletes the blocks. So that's good to know, and I'll make a note for that in my next video. It's probably a good idea to have both blocks and text running simultaneously. Okay, anyway, that concludes this video, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Peace.